got to start looking at ourselves to make sure our own immune systems give us that level of assurance that we can be healthy, because that's the bottom line, is how healthy are you. Uh, differences between raw milk and pasteurized milk are substantial. Raw milk has the phosphatase enzyme, which is uh, critical for the absorption of calcium, and if you have osteoporosis, you don't need much of that. It's like lactase, uh, missing in people with lactose intolerance. Well, uh, guess what? If you have osteoporosis, you don't make much of that enzyme. It doesn't work very well. <coughs> the test for pasteurization is called the negative phosphatase test. Phosphatase is the third most prevalent enzyme in raw milk. So how are you supposed to absorb calcium if you don't have phosphatase in pasteurized milk? It's the big dairy lie. And unfortunately, um, people are taking things like Fosamax and killing their jaw, dead bot jaw syndrome, and all kinds of other things happening because they're searching for that golden or that, uh, that silver bullet. And in fact, food has it. Whole foods have it. Raw milk is a whole food. Lipase, which is obviously uh, the fatty acid, the, fast, uh, the enzyme uh, that helps uh, hydrolyze fats, is available in raw milk. Immunoglobulins, there's a bunch of them. And they help resolve uh, asthma and boost, bolster the immune system. If you think about what a cow does, she interrelates with the environment for us. She's out in a pasture. She's eating all kinds of pollen and all kinds of things out there, interrelating to all kinds of antigens and creating antibodies in her milk to those antigens. And as a result, when we drink the milk, we get her experience of what she's interrelated with the environment. Just like bees do the same thing. In fact, it's kind of interesting, land of milk and honey, to think about those two things. Those are both living foods that interrelate to the environment, which help bolster the human immune system. Living raw, raw milk does that same thing. Lactase producing bacteria, again, bifidobacteria, E. coli. If you, if you see in the newspaper, E. coli sickens thousands. No, what they're talking about is not E. coli, they're talking about E. coli 0157E7, which is one subclass of E. coli. And unfortunately, people think of E. coli as bad. Well, there's 230 kinds of E. coli, only a couple of which are pathogenic. The good ones control the bad ones. The other thing about E. coli is you can't make vitamin K, B1, B2, B6, and B12 without them. Without E. coli, we would die in a few weeks. So they're essential to life. 50% of our digestive tracts and bacteria are E. coli, the beneficial kinds of E. coli. So don't let anybody tell you E. coli is bad. There's only a couple of them that are bad. You need to do them. Delicate proteins are changed and denatured by the heating process. Uh, and then the, the vitamins, they can be diminished as well. Some are not diminished very much, but many are diminished dramatically. Calcium and phosphorus are not uh, absorbed well with pasteurized milk. So big differences. When the FDA says things like, drinking raw milk is like playing, playing Russian roulette with your life. I've heard this so many times, just time and time and time. These PhDs that they hire to come be testimony, you know, testimony in front of an expert witness. They call me in to be an expert witness on raw milk and say, you know what, I don't care about roulette with your life. I'll take that any day. What about American roulette with your life is where 240 people a day die from this, and we don't even talk about it. And, and about all this list of all these chronic diseases, that's American roulette. And that's like a death knell, a 99% death kind of thing. I'll take Russian roulette any day. So, I mean, it's kind of funny when you say that, but it's so true because the dogma it just doesn't fit the paradigm. Um, these are the conditions in which you see pathogenic bacteria developing. Cows standing on concrete, cows in big slurries of manure being fed a lot of grain. <coughs> this is in antibiotics and hormones. <coughs> this is where you see weakened cows' immune systems, and this is where you see 31% <coughs> Excuse me, 31% of the, of the time, the cow's milk has pathogens, and about 98% of the time, you find salmonella. This is the kind of conditions that we see all over the place. So, um, that is milk intended for uh, pasteurization. This is the kind of conditions, this is organic pasture dairy, where you see sun drenched pastures. This is what it looks like right now, even after getting a couple inches of rain in the last few weeks. We were able to move from pasture to pasture to pasture. The cows are not letting run a bunch of mud, and there's no manure. The manure is there, it's digested, but in sunlit, sunlit, drenched environments, this is where you safe. And this milk has always been safe. Even back in the 1800s, where a lot of people died from raw milk, that milk was from conditions in the previous page, not conditions like this out in Pennsylvania. Uh, this is a shelf talker you might see on some of the stores out there. I don't know if it's still up, but. Uh, it's kind of cute. 800 times more probiotic than even yogurt. Uh, that's a true statement. When you think about yogurt having four bacteria and, and, and milk having 20 to 30, it's a tremendously more robust rebuilder of Okay, that's the general basis of the, of the bottom line of this whole thing. The elements found in raw milk are missing in America. 
you look at Western Price's work, and you look back in the 20s and 30s, and you evaluated different tribes around the world. Remember, these tribes never talked to each other. They didn't know each other. The um, Eskimos never talked to the Maasai. The Maasai never talked to the Bulgarians. Nobody ever talked to them. But they had very similar things in the diet. Not all of them drank raw milk. Guess what? The Eskimos never drank any raw milk. But they had fermented raw fish. And they ate seal blubber. And they had all kinds of things that were high in enzymes, high in bacteria, and high in raw animal fats. So you can get your raw, you, you, you can get it from raw milk real easy and delicious, or you can eat roadkill if you want. It's, it's, it's your choice. That's the beauty of raw milk, is you get a nice little container that's got all these things missing in America. Besides, uh, I drank raw milk, as a matter of fact, all the time. And they never had lactose intolerance whatsoever that was from America. Not from drinking raw milk. It's not good. The Bulgarians had sprouted breads, and they had uh, the sauerkrauts, and they had vegetables, and they had raw milk, and they had raw cheeses, and they all lived to be 100 years old. In fact, they named an area of Bulgaria the Centurion area, because everybody lived to be 100 years old and died of non chronic diseases. So um, we, we have a, a, an awakening that we need to have in America. It's led by people that care about health. And you'd be surprised how few people actually care about health until they lose it. Yeah. I hear you? Yeah. They, they just... Well, it's there. They assume it's okay, whatever, if I get sick, go to the doctor. They don't think about it as something to be pain because they're going to lose it in a while. They don't, it's not an awareness people get. And it's not something they're asked to get. It's something that's just not regarded as important until you lose it. I think it was Carnegie or Ford, one of the two, on their deathbed, who said, I'd give up all my money to have my health back. You got it. And most people think of that when they lose it or they get yeah. painful or whatever they may have. They think, oh gosh, I wish I had health. That wasn't an awareness early on. In fact, it's an awareness that you just start with children and mothers, and, and really growing them up to think that, gosh, nobody can provide them health except for you. And you can help advise them, doctors can help advise them, but at the same time, it's you that make decisions about whether you're going to be able to run and live and have healthy children yourself. Weston Price, when he went around the world, Dr. Price talked to these, these uh, tribes. He asked the question of all of them. He asked them, why do you eat these foods? And the answer in their various languages came back the same thing. It was, because we want to have healthy children. If you ask an American why they eat food, they say because I'm hungry or taste good or whatever. But they rarely will ever say because I want to have healthy offspring. And so we don't think of <coughs> ramifications of what we're doing today in our genetic uh, next round or what's going on in the country. As a result, we see things like autism. One in every 150 kids you know, right now being born autistic. We see things like ADD. We see all kinds of things that are all nutritional basis. We see genetic things going on. We see all kinds of stuff going on. Yeah, vaccinations. Now, you, Interesting thing you bring up about vaccination. Raw milk is a vaccination, but it's an oral vaccination because it's giving you 25 different kinds of bacteria that's being given to your body in the correct form to the correct route so that your body can actually amount a defense against whatever it might be and actually have the correct relationship to build antibodies and guess what? Have a robust immune system. A vaccination, you've got all kinds of weird stuff in, that, in, in a vaccination injection. It goes directly into your circulatory system via a direct injection and as a result, guess what? It bypasses the normal systems that you would have to robustly build an immune response. And as a result, you see all kinds of weird things happening we had never seen right after getting a vaccination, especially in a child who has immune depression. So how's he supposed to even react anyway? So that's pretty spooky. Any questions about raw milk and how it may fit in your life or not fit in your life? Any thoughts about that? I brought some samples today of some stuff. I brought 